You've dropped off your passengers or have made a quick fuel stop. Now you've got to get the engine restarted. This time in the ABS hangar, hot starts for engines with the Continental Continuous Flow fuel injection system. The Continental Continuous Flow Fuel Injection System requires liquid fuel all of the way from the fuel tanks to the injector nozzles. If there is vapor in the lines, it can prevent fuel flow and the engine won't start. The hot start procedure then is designed to circulate fuel to purge vapor in a hot engine, especially in the engine driven fuel pump, before attempting an otherwise normal start. Part of the problem is that most beach POHs aren't completely clear on the hot start procedure. Some POHs don't provide any hot start guidance at all, except a note to turn the auxiliary pump on momentarily after start to keep the engine running, assuming it starts in the first place. Other POHs put the procedure in the form of a note. While the IO550 airplane's POH provides a step-by-step -step hot start procedure, in a dedicated checklist. Regardless of the POH, the hot start procedure is the same. First, ensure the mixture control is in the idle cutoff position. With the mixture in idle cutoff, the mixture valve in the fuel controller is closed and all of the fuel that gets to that valve circulates back to the fuel tank. Knowing how the fuel injection system works, you know you can't flood the engine by running the auxiliary fuel pump if the mixture is at idle cutoff. Next, run the auxiliary fuel pump at on or high for 30 to 60 seconds. This circulates fuel through the engine driven fuel pump and the fuel controller before returning fuel to the tanks. This carries vapor away from the fuel pump and lines, replacing it with liquid fuel. Since fuel does not go through the transducer or flow divider, you will not see any indication of fuel flow on original or aftermarket panel gauges while you circulate the fuel. Use a timer. You're sitting in a hot airplane and you and your passengers want to go. You'll probably think a full minute has elapsed long before it actually has if you don't time the fuel circulation operation. In my experience, 30 seconds may be enough to get the engine started when it's hot, but for best results, circulate the fuel for a full 60 seconds before turning the auxiliary fuel pump off and continuing with your start. After purging the system, perform a normal start. Mixture and throttle controls fully forward, prime the cylinders, although don't overprime, retard the throttle, and then start the engine. When the engine is very hot, there may still be pockets of vapor in the lines. If the engine stumbles or begins to quit following a hot start, run the auxiliary fuel pump on or high momentarily to keep the engine supplied with liquid fuel. When it begins to smooth out, turn the auxiliary fuel pump off. When do you need to perform a hot start? If you've shut down just long enough to discharge your board passengers, you probably will be able to start right back up without fuel circulation. If the airplane sits for more than a few minutes after flight, however, it may need a hot start for several hours, even in relatively cold weather. There's nothing definitive, but unless you've preheated the engine, if the oil temperature is in the green arc when you turn on the battery master switch before start, you probably need to do a hot start. If you try a hot start when you don't need to, you won't make the eventual start any more difficult. All you will do is delay your start by 60 seconds while you circulate fuel. Then you'll perform a normal start. So there's no hazard if you misdiagnose the need for a hot start procedure. This video is part of the American Bonanza Society's Beechcraft Essential Systems and Techniques course, free to members in the ABS Online Learning Center. Log in 
or become a member at bonanza.org. Don't miss another edition of The ABS Hangar. Subscribe to the American Bonanza Society YouTube channel. We'll see you next time in The ABS Hangar.